Hi, my name is Cindy Chase. Thank you for coming to my session. My session is Building Blocks to Success, Developing Foundational Skills. I am the Shape America 2020 National Adapted Physical Education Teacher of the Year. Uh, goals, by, goals by end of session. Be able to see the importance of providing physical literacy learning opportunities for all students needing full PE, be able to identify foundational skills and ways to develop them, and meet students where they're at through development, remediation, and accommodation modification of skills. Work to develop and maximize students' gross motor skills potential using multiple means and strategies. Myself up there. And sorry. Um, what is meaningful PE? Um, meaningful PE is creating meaningful experiences within our classes, um, class, where our classes fall into six key areas. And these features um, really contribute to that meaningful experience. Um, and this are include fun, social interaction, challenge, motor competence, personal relevant learning, and joy. And joy is one of my favorites because it's great when we see our students get so excited, joyful for completing something or for completing a dance and, and just being part of the class. I think of meaningful PE as our why. As APE and PE teachers, we want to be able to provide students an opportunity to learn, engage, and develop foundational and gross motor skills while providing them um, meaningful experiences. Building our blocks to success starts by laying a solid foundation. Today I want to focus on these four key foundational skills. Balance, visual tracking, motor planning, and body awareness. These foundational skills are important for everyday life, but for the purpose of this session, we're going to focus on developing these skills in order to maximize our students' gross motor skills potential. All of these skills are related to perception. And perception is the ability to derive meaning from what we see, hear, and feel. A major breakdown in development is, as ident in these areas is identified as perceptual deficits. And these skills also are known, also known as um, perceptual disorders, these four skills. When we look at perception and we think, we think of it builds um, schema about body movement, space, objects, and time. And when we break in these breakdown of development leaves us additional challenges to develop these skills and why it's so important to work on developing these foundational skills. Developing our foundation skills is a way that we can create a solid foundation for our students and all students and can lead to maximizing their success. As you see that we have foundation skills on the bottom and then what builds on top of that is our gross motor skills, which includes our locomotor and ball skills. And um, as we know, these gross motor skills then are going to also lead to children building new skills on top of that, as in sports skills and um, working from there. So let's look again at um, what is some of our gross motor skills. And that starts with our locomotor, which are include these seven um, locomotor skills develop, that develop the ability to move our large muscles while performing these motor skills and um, we're all familiar with them. And then we're gonna, in, then we're gonna look at our ball skills. And in the, they also um, are showing us ways for kids to find success through and work on as they develop their throwing, catching, kicking, hand dribbling, striking, and then also underhand rolling. I think of, um, ways that all our students can find success and access to practicing and developing skills often comes down to different types 
types and sizes of balls and items to throw, catch, and kick. And that provides them more, op more opportunities to success, such as the balloon and scarf, which we move slower and easier to visually track and catch. And for students that are uncomfortable with things being thrown at them, a softer ball, such as a yarn ball or a bean bag, is much easier for them to, to catch as they're developing this skill. We're focused on our first foundational skill, and that is balance. And that it, and balance is an even distribution of weight, enabling someone to remain upright and steady. There are two types of balance, and there's static balance when we're stationary, and then dynamic balance as, when we're moving. And as we can see in these pictures, the demonstration of each. Uh, we can increase the level of difficulty with balance as we add more elements um, to it. And just as if a child learn, can walk across the ground on a line, but then up on the raised balance beam, there's a higher level of difficulty. Oops. Here are a few different um, examples of less uh, balance of how we can balance and practice balancing and um, that includes the balance beam and obviously a more challenging one would be any tumbling or front roll and then also um, I have my body shape balancers which is an activity that encourages students to explore different balance challenges and moving them from simple to more challenging um, provides practice for everyone. And up at the top part of that definition is balance is also the process of integrating sensory input from multiple sources. So it looks at our vestibular, our kinesthetic, tactile, and visual. If we look for ways to incorporate each of our foundational skills in our teaching, we can look at three different areas where growth in these skills can occur. So if we look under development, um, we can ask ourselves what and how can I teach to help in the development of these foundation skills. And I've just listed kind of a brief within our lesson. Um, we can do it within our warm ups, our activities, and our content development. Under remediation, what can I provide for remediation of these foundation skills what can, that can help students that are struggling? And I have listed progression levels, uh, really, or you know, really is helpful so that each student can be working at where they're at. Also, different types of equipment will help. And under accommodation, um, what accommodation and modifications can I provide for students to find success and access in performing foundational skills and gross foundation and gross motor skills. And I really think you meet, meeting students where they're at and providing them the tools the, to help them be successful, um, differentiating that piece will um, help them to grow and be successful at their, at their level and at their rate of learning. Our second foundation school is visual, is visual tracking. And visual tracking is the ability to attend to a target or an object. And as we see, I have my example of something that will help with visual tracking when you have an object, and that is that scarf and balloon I showed you either um, earlier. And also some other areas to really remember or some information is remembering that looking and following something as it moves is much easier when you track it on a solid surface versus when it's um, in the air. And along with when it's stationary, such as if you're kicking a ball, that ball is a lot easier to track and then hit, kick, as, um, than it is when the ball is rolling towards you and it's moving. In ball skills, things that we're looking at, um, we're tracking are looking to receive, to throw, to uh, throw to the target or to another person, and to hit the ball and to kick the ball. I had eye-hand coordination or hand-eye is a skill that enables the eyes to guide the hands to catch a ball. 
Another, um, here are some other examples on working on visual tracking. And if we start under development, as we were talking about, this is group juggling. And in, the, in, in, in this activity, you're able to have all the different groups working at, their, at the pace of that group. They're working on underhand throw is a much easier way to um, visually track and catch the ball. Different types of balls. We're using a yarn ball in this activity to really maximize um, our students' success. And then, as that group, as each group, as each group improves, then they'll add another ball in. In the picture in the middle, this is one of my students, and we'll just stay with the one ball. We'll be calling um, each other's name each time, same partner. And so, it's a really great opportunity to gain skills, have a lot of opportunities for practice, and work together um, in an inclusive and integrated setting. Um, we also have table ball, which provides a great way for students to find success catching the ball while it rolls on that solid surface. It is easier, as we talked about, it's easier to um, visually track this than when it's thrown through space. And um, I've had several students that have always required physical assistance learning uh, whatever they're learning to become independent in catching while playing t um, table ball. Uh, a tip is to provide less, less assistance and when the ball rolls, allowing that cause and effect. So if that ball falls off the table and that student is able to track and notice it, then they are eventually going to start to trapping and, and reach for it more. And uh, looking, reaching, and catching is a skill that for some of my students, they don't tend to move up to. They more of a trap the ball. So this is a great activity to practice. There are many levels of it, so that's why I have development or remediation. Um, adding a bell ball will help somebody that is maybe visually impaired. Or for some of our students with autism, it really provides them um, additional sensory input. They get both the visual and the auditory part to it. And then striking a ball suspended rope using hand while visually tracking. This is a student in this picture that is a part of my paddle um, skills and we're on a tennis court. And so this is everybody else has a paddle and is working on the court to hit it across the net. But for this student, this is where he's at and he's working on the same striking skills um, where in the area where he can be successful. And on our third foundational skill, it's motor, is motor planning. And that is the ability to organize the body's actions, knowing what steps to take and in what order to complete a particular task. And I, in this obstacle course, we provide the learner a visual map, a sequence of sorts, a beginning, middle, and end. And that really helps them to see, um, see what, they're, you know, what, what they're supposed to do with this visual map. I really, uh, I, was, I, I guess my, thing, my, thing, my, my favorite thing about obstacle course is it, that it actually leads to growth in all, and development in all four areas, motor planning, body awareness, ba um, balance, and visual tracking. And it really engages that proprioceptive and vestibular system. So if you haven't been doing obstacle courses, give it a try. Other motor planning um, skills are, are here uh, in this these picture examples under development. This is an, a great activity of crossing the river group challenge. And it a lot and it has the students picking up the poly spot. They can't step on the floor and they're working together as a team to pass that poly spot to the front and move across it, But it is a pattern that they need to follow. And um, remediation, having those visuals to kind of help identify and determine for students where they're going to go in this one in this picture. A student has always been hand dribbling but not moving forward. So this kind of provides that visual piece and um, helps her to move to that next step. And then under modification, this is an obstacle course and one of my students, um, her para was able to get her out of the wheelchair and so she was able to participate and 
at a level that she could and um, that and then allowing her to walk on the balance beam and move through the different parts of the obstacle course. So that was very cool. And their body awareness. We have it's the ability to understand where our bodies are in space and how our bodies move. And um, this is our fourth foundational skill. And here's some tips on how to improve body awareness for our students. And the first one is heavy work. And so that's really for them to become aware of their system. You know, that's, um, it provides that, that proprioceptive, that sensory input. So pushing and jumping is a great thing for them to do. Carrying things, um, you know, books from one place to another, all those kind of things really engages their body, their awareness of their body and space. Identify body parts and play games. Now I think of head is a simple one is like head, shoulders, knees, and toes and different kinds of, um, you know, a tag game when you stop, you need to put your hands, you know, on your head or on your knees and just different ways to, to incorporate um, that. Uh, mirror games and modeling others, you know, whether you're doing that in warmups, but also as partners where one student is, is moving their hands out slowly in different movements and the other person is just as if they're in a mirror has to copy and model it or copy that in that activity. We already talked a little bit about obstacle courses and then practice visual and spatial um, pieces such as puzzles and coloring all can really um, improve our body, um, a student's body awareness. Other ways to work on body in spatial awareness is um, under development. This is um, an activity we're playing follow the leader. It really does require these students to um, work together and be aware of that spatial awareness. If all these little groups are together, I usually start with two students and this is an integrated PE class. One of my students um, there on the end, it took her almost a year just to feel comfortable and be able to keep up with that pace. They, of course, have slowed down for her to be successful. I, um, in remediation, I'm modeling, when you model um, either a peer or an adult, um, is modeling the warmups next to a student that is not necessarily able to always follow along with the teacher. It gives them an additional support. And then under accommodation, I have um, visuals and for my student that really doesn't know, um, doesn't know that, his, that he has, his body is beyond his shoulders. So he never raises his hand beyond his shoulders. But now that he has an object, um, this um, paddle, he's able to reach up. And over time, when I say reach now, he doesn't need the paddle except for maybe the first time out of our 10 reaches. And then other accommodations in some pieces of equipment. I have running sticks for students that aren't really aware of their hands and where they're, how they're moving. Um, you know, when they run, they can run with their arms down. And so by um, you holding on to these running sticks, it really gives them that proprioceptive input. And then you kind of encourage that movement of the elbows in opposition. This really helps. It also helps for our students um, they're trying to perform that you might see that are performing a horizontal jump and their legs move forward, but their arms stay behind. Sometimes that's a body awareness. Sometimes that's a motor planning issue, but certainly having some objects in their hand helps that movement. Um, it needs to be heavy enough that they can feel, or I had for one students where the balls were a little too light, but he knew the colors of them. And I said, okay, swing arms, bring red and blue, red and green ball forward. And he really improved um, in moving those sticks. It, may, it provided that additional um, information and to help him out. And then I have the bucket here under accommodations because when we're trying to reach and our hands, our students' hands are gonna go out there, but if they lack that body of awareness, they're not able to track and move their hands. They're not sure where their hands are, but if they're holding a bucket, and then they move and reach out, that input they receive from holding that bucket will really help them to um, receive that ball in space versus by their hands, by their stomach. 
said, so now I want to focus on our, hold on a second, sorry. We're going to focus on, on the multiple ways we can support the development and functional of body awareness. I know that we talked about development, remediation, and accommodation. I'm giving, um, and I just listed a few different activities that um, to give you an idea of what that, you know, what examples there might be out there. So development under body awareness, what you could do is really, as I think of as, as chase and flee tag games, moving safely through space, tetherball, four square, um, scooter board games, and hopscotch, those would be ones. And then, and when I think of remediation, a lot of times I think of different equipment options. Um, and so that provide, and so I've listed a few and then accommodations. And I think I've shared all of those when you're throwing release, your, um, you know, different things that would um, help you, you know, using different equipment, like jumping. If a, a child's not able to jump by having a mini tramp and working on that bend and straighten, and it gives them more feedback that really can often help them to get that movement, that motion started. Um, when we're looking at why are these skills so important, I think is a great question to ask. And when we look at both foundational and gross motor skills and why they're so important, I think of, stu I think of students that struggle with developing their foundational skills and developing their gross motor skills becomes even a greater challenge. And this often leads to frustration and a feeling of failing that can often lead to them avoid trying. Um, you know, the lack of body awareness can um, impact overall development of skills, including correct body placement. I've had several stu students that are in um, that are in resource and in inclusion or in speech only, and really. I start to see them and they come to me feeling like a failure in certain activities and really reluctant to um, participate. And I think of one of my second graders that ha came with no confidence, very frustrated behaviors. Uh, every other word out of him was, I can't do it. And um, these statements, they, you know, for the first few months, that's all I could hear. And I really worked towards, um, trying to change it, change the, the tape recording was here in his head, change that language to, you know, not yet, and look at my little successes. So by creating little successes um, really allowed him some feeling of moving it from I can't to not yet, and finding, and finding those places where I did it. And this is when I look at that confidence and competence and how, what an important role it plays in that ongoing cycle of skill development, and how important it is that we make that we may, um, that we make sure we provide opportunities for all our students to feel levels of success in wherever they need to do in whatever place in the developmental scale of that development, remediation, and accommodations, but finding success meeting them where they're at. All right, so. Developing foundation skills, what are some other ways that we can provide opportunities for student success? And so I'm just going to share a few more and that I think are really key in, in providing um, student success. And the first one is really providing that sensory rich um, environment and um, activating that proprioceptive and vestibular um, systems that really will help you know, with that proprioceptive receiving sensations from the receptors to those muscles and joints, tendons, it really kind of gives them input and to that vestibular, which informs the nervous system where the body is in relationship, um, you know, to the pull of gravity. So really giving them um, those pieces really can enrich it. And then I've shared some examples down below. And then teaching to different learning styles in order to reach all of our students, this visual auditory kinesthetic, see it, say it, and do it is really important. It's so all our kids are um, different kinds of learners, um, how it is. I think I always think of that visual piece is key because that is a permanent, excuse me, 
the providing visuals provides that permanent piece versus just what they, we say, because that is temporary. And then um, when I look under universal design for learning and, how, and our options in PE and how we provide for all our students um, and so they can learn uh, allowing for those accommodations and modifications to fit each student's needs. And in our four categories um, where we can make some uh, change adjustments to our rules, equipment, environment, and some people call it instructional strategies. I like it to think of it as learning strategies. So it's more of a student, um, more of a student focus. And then in our different, by providing that differentiating instruction and making those, we make those lessons accessible for all students. And these are just a few tips and strategies that are, that can be really helpful. And there's, and so I'm going to kind of share these simply stated information and rules. Uh, consistency and routine and that schedule with your warm ups allowing students extra time for transition to also remember allowing them to process that information and then at, we talked to earlier i talked earlier about teaching progression levels provides all students that opportunity for success and providing that just right challenge for each student using stations and small sided games and versus large group games and providing those appropriate peer modeling um, can be really key when you have you have that ability to do that. Those peer models really provide um, students that social piece and, um, you know, and really can bring in that engagement more than than they would respond to um, the teacher or adult. And um, I truly believe this that we have the best job. And um, when we, you know, when we what do we do to get buying or engagement for our students? And I've just listed things that we do do in providing that purposeful play. Um, and sometimes you know, when you have the elementary, I think of, and it's we have fun while making it fun for our students. We play music and dance and make it engaging and meaningful for each one of our students. We create challenges, I like to call just right challenges and provide support for success. We promote social interaction opportunities we provide motor learning opportunities in multiple settings. And really, we provide meaningful PE, or you can call it meaning, meaningful experiences. And that, I think, is really powerful. Because I believe our goal is met as APE and PE teachers when we're able to provide all students opportunities to learn and develop foundational gross motor skills while providing meaningful experiences in PE and adapted PE in physical education and adapted physical education. I'd like to thank you for joining my session. And um, here's my contact information. And if you have, so if you have any questions or um, you can also, you can send that to me. Um, I'm also, a, a, I'm also on Twitter and there's my um, Twitter handle. Uh, thank you again. Oh, and for my national standards, I did just remember that. Did I add that? There they are. Here's the national standards that um, include what I just talked about and stuff. Thank you very much.